Thanks, Dr. Wu, for inviting me uh, here today. I also like to thank Dr. Birdie. And uh, over the past 23 years, Chuck has helped me and guided me through my academic career. When I first met Dr. Birdie, and um, you know he has one of the and uh, oldest cell phone, and um, <clears throat> he needed to carry another backpack for extra batteries. Uh, and Chuck is a grandfather of uh, pediatric pain medicine in the world. And uh, he founded the first uh, and the best pediatric pain center in, in, in this hospital. And uh, Dr. Birdie and uh, Dr. Greco and I, we are all pediatricians. And um, Dr. Greco and I actually did a pediatric residency in the same hospital, but she's uh, much younger than me. And Dr. Greco, she established the first ACGME approved the pediatric pain fellowship program here in Boston Children's Hospital. I have nothing to disclose. <laughs> and we're going to talk about pain and suffer, discuss about complementary medicine, address acupuncture chi meridian, and present to you the mechanism of acupuncture and then <clears throat> We're going to also, you know, practically talk to you how we integrate acupuncture in pediatric pain service. Dr. Greco and Dr. Chuck has mentioned about this kind of patient, 12 years old patient, and uh, has uh, neuropathic pain, 20 out of 10 pain, cannot go to school, refer for pain management, and then also. On commonly, we, can, we will see 12 years old patient, has headache, and normal CAT scan, and then we give sumotriptan, beta blocker, ketolac, patients still have a headache. An eight years old patient has sedation for MRI and uh, has nausea, vomiting. We give Zofran, Regran, and patients still um, feel nauseated in the recovery room. What can we do? In the clinic, you know, in the busy pediatric clinic, you probably have seen these patients with we call functional or dysfunctional abdominal pain. You find nothing wrong when patients complain of my pain. <clears throat> Acupuncture brings dead scientists back to life. You can find this kind of magazine over Cambridge in the street. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk how can we do this today. A world without pain, can such a place exist? It not only can, it does. It's not utopia. A physician wrote a book, talk about the gift of pain, experience in taking, patient, taking care of patient with leprosy. Pain truly is God's grace gift to us. Pain has a value that becomes clearest in its absence. I would recommend you to watch this video and talk about a kid in Minnesota, congenital deficiency of the pain fiber, and also two kids in Europe. A life without pain. Pain is really a gift no one wants, but none of us can do without. Pain may be mandatory. Everybody has pain, but suffering is optional. Suffering is what drives patients to come to see us. There are eight different kinds of suffer, for physical suffer, for emotional suffer, suffering from giving birth. That's why we do epidural for labor and analgesia. Getting old is kind of suffer. In the hospital setting, we take care of patients for various disease, take care of their suffer. And the dying is not a suffering. I grew up in Taiwan, and uh, the first time I encountered this concept was when I was in kindergarten. My grandmom told me. She's a very religious Buddhist. And also, emotional suffering includes suffering due to separation from loved one, due to meeting with a congenial, suffering due to unfulfilled wishes, 
suffering due to aggregate. We're going to talk about acupuncture. Acupuncture is not an uncommon <clears throat> service in most of the pediatric pain center. We did a survey in Northern America, 30% of the pediatric pain center actually offer acupuncture inside the institution. It's not you open the yellow page, refer a patient outside. We look into a patient coming to Boston Children's Hospital for surgery. We ask them, one year prior to the surgery, have you tried various different complementary alternative medicine? 6% of kids coming to Boston Children's Hospital actually had tried acupuncture. Acupuncture is a complementary medicine. Be careful how you spell this word. <laughs> the service is not completely free. <laughs> Acupuncture, Chinese called Zhen Jiu. Zhen is needle. Jiu is moxibustion. Practicing of needling and moxibustion called acupuncture. It's using very small healthy device for therapeutic or preventive purposes. The theory of acupuncture is part of traditional Chinese medicine. It's compatible with Confucianism and Taoism, and the later on influenced by Buddhism. Zhen Jiu Jia Yi Jin is basic text in the acupuncture. It says, superior physician control disease before any illness has declared itself. Average physician practice acupuncture before it's, the disease has come to its crisis. The inferior practitioner treat the patient when the illness is already dying away. Thousand years ago, they have concept of preventive medicine. This is the first text in English published 1823 about acupuncture. And uh, prior to this, there are a lot of different translations to Portuguese, German and other languages. This is the needle device they used in 1823. Dr. Birdie and Dr. Greco talk about um, <clears throat> RSD, neuropathic pain. Dr. Bincher is grandfather of neurology in our country, and he first described gunshot wound and injury of nerve in 1864. This is the first description of what we call neuropathic pain. RSD, complex regional pain syndrome. In the book, he described he used needle insertion and the hookup with electricity help the patient, similar to what we do acupuncture. In the description in his book, he said the only technique was the battery didn't last long enough in 1864. The framework of acupuncture is based on yin and yang. Yin and yang are two opposite aspects. Yin and yang cannot exist in isolation. If there is no yin, there is no yang. If there is no yang, yin cannot exist. Yin and yang can be transformed to each other. Yin and yang are in the constant supporting dynamic balance. If yin and yang are not balanced, then disease will occur. The concept of qi. The body is controlled by the vital force of qi. The qi is created between heaven and earth. Qi is circulating in all the human beings and the living creatures. The qi comes from plant, comes from the animal. animal. It's better to consume fresh product, has better qi, better energy. The energy is better come out from more organic product. The human body is controlled by this vital force called qi. When I'm seeing Dr. Wolf over there, Dr. Wolf look at me, and we have exchanged our qi. The qi is also a relationship. And qi in Chinese character combine air and rice together. So air has oxygen. The rice has glucose. That's produced the energy source in our body. Qi is inherited at birth, maintained during life by intake of food and air. Einstein already told us that qi, the energy, can be transformed from material. Qi circulates throughout the body, nourishes and defends the body part. 
illnesses are associated with disharmony or disturbance of the qi. The acupuncture include acupuncture point. They are qi the energy circulate through the meridian. The meridian are connected acupuncture point together. There are several different kind of meridian system in the body. And there are also a micro system. For example, ear is one of the micro system. Ear is very interesting. From embryology, it can bind with mesoderm, endoderm, and ectoderm all merging the ear. You can fit the whole fetus, whole body inside the ear. You can use the ear to treat the various different illnesses. The electrical conductance, conduction increase in the acupuncture point. And this is the acupuncture point finder. You can use this to find the acupuncture point. Acupuncture point decrease the resistance, increase the conductance. So if I want to find this major acupuncture point, I can use these to, to identify this is the acupuncture point. Acupuncture point increase electrical conduction. So you can use this device, find the acupuncture point in the ear, and you can put a small pellet to produce acupressure effect to help the baby for sedation. The study has been done, put a small pellet in the ear, auricular acupressure can reduce the anxiety of patient when the patient being transported to the hospital. Another study was done, this small pellet produced acupressure effect in the ear can reduce the pain and anxiety in elderly patient with hip fracture during the emergency transportation. Chinese medicine, no difference compared to our conventional medicine. When we diagnose the patient, first you look. Second, you listen. If patient don't want to talk to you, you ask, and finally do the physical examination. 1575, Zhou Yufan talk about 11 out of 15 steps of pediatric diagnosis is by looking and inspection. This is one of the common porcelain doll Chinese doctor put in the back. When the patient don't want to talk to you, you present this, that point out to me where it bothers you. And um, there are three different kind of layer of defense mechanism, defense chi in the body. First is defense chi called wei chi, surround the body, produced from digestion and metabolism. The second layer of the chi, the defense mechanism called rong chi, which is circulate inside the body, make sure the body organ can function. The third chi, third energy is yuan chi, is regulate all the chi activity. This is the inherited constitutional from your parents. Acupuncture service first, it neutralizes the condition called balance the yin and yang. Secondary, acupuncture can help the patient cope, harmonize the chi and the blood circulation. You probably have seen some of the patients come to your clinic in this condition. And the patient always want to go back to that. And uh, sometimes keep grasping the past, maybe the problem. You need to help the patient cope. And lastly, tonify, retreat, regain the chi, the energy, help the patient return to normal function. Once the medicine does the same thing, Dr. Birdie and Dr. Greg will talk about various different medication. We neutralize the patient's pain condition. We refer the patient to see psychologists to help them to cope to, for behavioral medicine related treatment. <laughs> Lastly, most importantly, tonification through physical therapy. The body cell is charged with positive and negative charge through the membrane. And the acupuncture needle, when sitting outside, is inert. When needle goes through the skin, you create a gradient. For example, the tip of acupuncture needle is body temperature. The handle of the acupuncture needle is environmental temperature. So there's a gradient there. 
and you manipulate the needle, you can disperse the energy or you can tonify the energy. Remember, go all days go back to physics. So you count clockwise goes up, clockwise rotation goes down. So patients has excess condition. You do counterclockwise rotation of needle. Patient come to see you, patient in deficiency today, you do clockwise rotation of needle to tonify the energy. There are nine different kinds of needle in classical text. Not until Song Dynasty, we unify, use one kind of needle. The needle device we use about 38 gauge is 0.18 millimeter in diameter. As compared to the smallest needle we use in the OR, 22 gauge needle, acupuncture needle is about quarter of regular IV size needle. Acupuncture is balanced between yin and yang. Acupuncture can bring the better part of you out, let you feel better. And how safe is acupuncture? Numerous studies have been done and shown that Acupuncture is safe in the hands of competent practitioner. Commonly we know is acupuncture you use needle and uh, you identify the acupuncture spot you want to do needle in and you tap the needle through the skin and, and you manipulate the needle until the subject feel the tension and pressure called the chi then you stop from there. And then there's another device you can use called moxibuction. It's the moxide, you can heat it up, the moxide, and you can use this to warm up, facilitate the meridian energy flow. And you can use a cupping. And cupping is uh, using these cups and uh, you can create little negative pressure there, <laughs> like this. Cupping can bring the deep stagnation energy to the superficial layer and release from there. And you can use finger pressure, acupressure. You can use acupressure to help the, the patient. Yeah, to press on the, on the acupuncture point and uh, then you can teach the kid to do acupressure at home. And there are the other different Chinese called Tui Na push and pull acupressure technique. Study has been shown that you press the yin tang, the third eye actually has bis monitor changes. I have a friend did acupressure on the parents when the kid undergoing anesthesia. This can decrease parents' anxiety when the parents are waiting for the kid in the pre-op waiting area. And then also you can use guasa. Guasa is uh, use a special tool, scraping through the skin and the rubbing through there can be very helpful to facilitate the energy flow. Commonly we use this device. This is made from the horn of water buffalo. Acupuncture is stimulated A delta fiber which mediates segmental inhibition of pain impulse carried through the C fiber. Dr. Han at China has done a lot of study using animal model, stimulate with low frequency versus high frequency. In his experience, low frequency is mediated through endomorphin and caplin, beta endorphin. 100 hertz high frequency mediated through dynorphin. And it works through various different specific opiate receptors and uh, produce energy effect. The effect of acupuncture can be reversed by Narcan, naloxone, in the dose-dependent manner. And the uh, acupuncture effect can be transferred from one rabbit to the other rabbit by transfuse the CSF. Recently, we have used a lot of fMRI study to study the mechanism of acupuncture. For example, this is auditory stimulation of a subject. You got fMRI picture, and you got similar fMRI picture when you stimulate auditory responsible acupuncture point. And study also looking at fMRI and the opiate release in the 
MRI picture. Recently, they have done a study looking into nerve block and acupuncture. The brain signal and uh, you can come out from fMRI. If you do the nerve block for the subject and the, the signal is gone, and the acupuncture moderated brain activity through the ne nerve network. It's not easy to do any acupuncture related research. Type of acupuncture, training of the person, selection of acupuncture point, how many treatment and outcome selection are not that easy. We conducted a study looking in kids undergoing ear tube surgery. We randomized to acupuncture group versus no acupuncture group. Immediately after this, the ear tube surgery, this is the group pain score without acupuncture. And the acupuncture group actually has less pain score. It turns out they are immediately after the, the surgery, the agitation score. This is a control group. This is the acupuncture group. We mentioned about resuscitation. One of the main resuscitation point is on the tip of your um, lips, between the, the nose and lips. You can use that particular point, stimulate that, can help the resuscita resuscitation. This is called GV26 point. Another common point that people use is in the bottom of the foot, in the midline, between anterior one-third and the posterior two-third. This is called kidney one point. Canadian anesthesiologist actually has done a study. You stimulate kidney one point as compared to two other majors. Patient wake up from general anesthesia much faster. So remember, this is one point is over here. You can use that if you near the head. And uh, over there in the feet is between anterior one-third and posterior two-third in the midline. You can stimulate that, can help the patient and wake up faster from anesthesia. Acupuncture can also help return gastrointestinal function and the ease um, dyspepsia and help irritable bowel syndrome. 70% of the pain actually can be helped by acupuncture. Study has been done for recurrent headache. The existing evidence suggests that acupuncture has a role in the treatment of recurrent headache. In Canada, they study acupuncture versus sumotriptan. Acupuncture and the sumotriptan were more effective than placebo in the early treatment of acute migraine headache. And also, they study acupuncture and beta blocker. Acupuncture has a role in helping patients with migraine headache. Cochrane Review has gathered all the research and um, their conclusion is acupuncture should be considered a treatment option for patients willing to undergo for migraine prophylaxis. How about for tension headache? They also indicate acupuncture could be a valuable non-pharmacological tool in patients with frequent episodes chronic tension headache. In terms of neuropathic pain, NIH has funded the HIV-related neuropathic pain. The study showed acupuncture is ineffective. However, there are other numerous studies support acupuncture for non-HIV-related neuropathic pain. In the animal model, you create a chunk model for neuropathic pain. This is a no acupuncture, this is the control, and this is the acupuncture group. Acupuncture can change the withdrawal threshold in the animal model with neuropathic pain. Earlier I presented to you a patient with uh, intractable nausea after the sedation. We provide acupuncture for the patient, and uh, she sent a note back to me, said, thank you so much for giving me acupuncture. You helped me a lot, like the magic trick. You get me out of the hospital. Thank you. And a kid with uh, persistent pain in the foot. And uh, this is a note from the patient says, you are not like those doctors. You listen to me. You believe in me when I say my foot hurt. You made me happy again. I can run and jump without pain. 
Sandra Keen suffers from migraines as well as severe abdominal pain as a result of a condition called ulcerative colitis. In addition to having surgery, she comes to Children's Hospital Boston for regular acupuncture treatments to help relieve her pain. I would be like doubled over, very just crying, uncomfortable. And then after I went with acupuncture, I was more relaxed and calm and the side effects were just basically gone. After a week or two, we weren't getting any more complaining about her abdominal pain or her back pain. It is very important for us to differentiate the difference between disease and the illnesses. Disease is what we diagnose the patient has. Illness is what the patient feel, what the patient suffer. There is a lot of disease. We cannot offer further help, but acupuncture has merit to build in, integrate in conventional therapy to help for various illnesses. Not until April of 1996, acupuncture finally get FDA approved as a medical device. And the NIH has an Office of Alternative Medicine established in 1992. And furthermore, they promote to National Center of Complementary Alternative Medicine. They have more than $100 million to spend in research. Dr. Wolf was one of the recipients for this previous research grant. In Massachusetts, the law says, if you have medical license, you can practice acupuncture in this commonwealth. And uh, if you apply for medical license, they ask you, what do you do? They are pediatrics. There are a lot of different subspecialty in pediatrics. You can also say you're doing pain management. Guess what's the first one? It says acupuncture there. It's alphabetical order. <laughs> there are several different organizations in the country and, um, <clears throat> and promote uh, the practice of acupuncture. Nationally, there's the Academy of Medical Acupuncture. Here, we have New England Society of Medical Acupuncture, and uh, we have a biannual meeting in our Walton campus. There's the American Board of Medical Acupuncture. Harvard CME offer one of the best and largest uh, acupuncture training in the country and here in Boston. The number of acupuncture provider is going to go up and uh, after January 1st, the Obamacare, and uh, I heard about more than 50% of the insurance company willing to provide acupuncture insurance. It is very important for us as a healthcare provider, we should see the patient address the patient as a whole, and emphasize the well-being. Well-being is not just absence of diseases, and value optimal functioning. And also, we should always consider a patient background, belief, family, culture, and the community. Practice pain management. This is the X axis of time. Y axis is severity of the pain. The nature course of pain like this, you get worse at the beginning and you get better afterward. Acupuncture can be helpful to ease the patient's discomfort and decrease the severity of the pain and cut back the duration of their suffering. We should love what we are doing. And everything we do is team effort. People work around you. Uh, working toward the common goal to help the patient. And we should be proud of what we are doing every day, and patient would trust what we can offer for them. <laughs> I'm going to conclude my talk with this quote. A clinician should cultivate the ways of heaven and earth, understand the dynamics of human spirit, and ponder the depth of nature. One will then grasp the way of life. Thank you very much. <laughs>